What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and this is the Banner Saga Stoic Studios recently released Viking indie RPG strategy offering and it was made up by former Bioware employees so we can expect some pretty interesting gameplay from this one. What is it? Well you take control of a Viking caravan that's been exiled from its home and we've got to keep an eye on it. It's got a grid based strategy combat system and promises to have a pretty interesting storyline as well. Now this is going to be a blind playthrough. For those of you that don't know what a blind playthrough is in the LP community, a blind playthrough is one where I have no idea what's coming. In fact, I am not familiar with the game mechanics whatsoever. But that all out of the way, you can see it's got gorgeous artistry. Let's get started because we can assume, since it's coming from ex Bioware employees, we're probably going to see a great deal of storyline in this first episode. Let's roll on out. Hmm. Well, it appears as though I'm going to have to do some reading. It says the gods are dead. In their wake, man and giants survived through a tenuous alliance, driving black destroyers called Dredge deep into the northern wastes. Now is an era of growth and trade. Life goes on. Only one thing has stopped. The sun. Sjá dreggjana á ferli neðabóra. It has been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, largest of the trade cities on the Val human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. We have been warned by stranded travelers about the brigands on the path through Ritzhorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. They got rolled out on. Super hard. Or slashed down on, I guess. Yeah, I have no idea what you just said, but it didn't sound friendly, plus you got a red box around your feet, pal. And that is never a good sign for me. You've arrived just in time, the Chieftain and Red and his men are now looking at a tougher fight than they bargained for. Okay, so we can click and drag around the screen, it says, to kind of get a view of our surroundings. Typical fair type stuff. This down here it's saying is the order of combat, so once again, fairly typical things to look at. We've got who is called a Shield Banger. Hopefully that's not his name. I mean, if his name is Shield Banger, that's, that's a name that inspires a little bit of confidence in a fight, but otherwise probably wouldn't get you hired at the accounting firm. Let's close that off. The blue tiles show where he can move, alright. And he fills four tiles. That's kind of an interesting D&D-esque ability. And apparently we're called Varl. That's why we have horns. I was wondering why we had bony protrusions coming out of our foreheads. And we're going to tell him to move right on over to there. And look at the gorgeous fluidity of that animation. My god, that is incredible. 
And so we can now attack him, and we can attack his strength or break his armor. Interesting. I suppose we'll go for... Let's attack his strength. Why not? Oh, it doesn't want me to do that. Or it wants me to cancel that out. We can do this, I believe. So it says strength counts as both health and damage. At a loss of two strength, means you'll now do two less damage. If strength falls below zero, the character will fall in battle. The armor blocks the damage, but can be reduced by a break attack. By breaking armor, you open them up to take more damage in the future. This enemy has only five strength remaining. A strength attack will kill him. Click the fist now to engage his strength, then confirm your choice. There it is. Okay. Wow. He just got annihilated. Although, to be fair, my sword was like as big as his entire body, giggity. So, he's down. Each time you make a kill, your renown grows, which can be used later to improve your characters. And it says after taking a turn, your action ends. Of course, next up is the enemy, who has badass braids and a beard that could win contests. And it appears as though he has full strength, but he will do little damage against our shield Banga's high armor. So he's done one damage right there to both our armor and our strength. Our next character up is Gunulf, who is a Warhawk, and it looks like he's out of range of everybody, but he can use willpower to boost his actions. Alright. I'm gonna assume that willpower is this right here. Yeah, it is, indeed. And so if you're going into gold tiles, what they want me to know right now is that it's going to cost me willpower to do that. So as we go through the game, you'll probably see me using that all the time. Hopefully I won't have to point it out any further. Let's move our Warhawk into attack range so that he can kick somebody's ass. Go, Gunolf. All right, and it says that standard attacks will only affect a single enemy, but our Warhawk has... Our Warhawk. <laughs> that's terrible. Warhawk has a special ability that gives him a unique advantage. Click your Warhawk's tile to access an ability. Tempest. So it does normal strength damage to two adjacent enemies, starting from target and rotating clockwise. Oh, that is going to hurt like hell. That is badass. Okay. Wow, I am completely and totally struck by the fluidity of the animation. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Stoic has done such an amazing job thus far. Like, it just flows so well. It's like I'm watching a fine Disney cartoon from back in the classic days of animation, back 70s, 80s, and early 90s. All right, so we've made quick work of them, and there's pillage mode. That's exactly what I was looking for in a Viking-type game. Let us pillage. We will drink from their skull-shaped receptacles. And there are no more guaranteed turns. Check the initiative to see how the order below has changed. Yeah, whatever. If a character doesn't move, he can regain willpower. That's good to know. And the Chieftain is in some trouble. The Shield Banger won't be able to finish the job with a normal attack, but willpower can be used to boost the damage. Click the Chieftain's tile to attack. It also doesn't help that we're like 600 feet tall. Alright, and then it says the number of stars available each turn are dictated by your Exertion stat. Exertion, where is that? Let's find Exertion. Okay, it's that one right there with the broken chain. If we exert ourselves too heavily, we'll find ourselves in a situation that will leave us with little extra options. So we're going to click that. And we expend one star to get some extra damage. And he is now slashed down and blood has flown through the air. And the Viking Saga continues. The foes lying dead at your feet would regret something. I didn't get a chance to read it. Whatever. You know, five renown. That's cool. It was probably flavor text anyways. Didn't, oh, there's a guy with a horn right there. He's doing his like type badassery. Sick. So excited about this game, you guys. Like a rabid wolf, that one. How did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched man and var slaughter each other, even before the dreads arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more dreads to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his last. This sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. I am in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight, and I'll gladly send you on your way with Doppelar King's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the Proving Grounds. 
It's just Mir was that guy sitting on the ground. He had like 14 arrows out of his back. Chapter 1, Only the Sun Has Stopped. You're approached by a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall. He cuts to the chase. Eric, steward of Strand, I manage the governor's business. Ubin, is it? It is. The governor tells me you'll be giving us a hand. We have the option to say it seems a bit chaotic around here. What did you have in mind? We'll go with what did you have in mind. Why not? Scalfings that you didn't hack up in the Great Hall scattered after you took out their chieftain. The governor wants to make sure that they stay down. Was hoping you'd join me at the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I know who can tell us. And we're off with our questing duties. And it said it wanted us to go down to the docks? Let's click around there. Let me handle this. You meander through rows of open-faced houses and eroded stalls. Colored canvases flap on a briny current. One man in particular blanches as you approach. Hod, I'm not in the mood today. For what? Talking to an idiot. The Scalfing's chieftain bled out about an hour ago, Hod. So when you tell me what rat anus the rest of them crawled back into, nobody's gonna try and kill you this time. I don't talk to... Well, they don't talk to me. I don't have the patience for this. Hod sweats visibly, fumbling with some dirty trinkets on his table. Wait, just buy one of these. If everybody thinks I'm being worked over every week, how am I supposed to know much? Just a little food money, huh? Let's... In, eh, should I intimidate him or pay him? I only have a hundred gold. I saw that on my UI right before. I mean, we're a giant Viking guy with huge horns and a massive dwarf beard. Also, our little leather straps are flapping in the wind, so the weather must be nasty. Most people don't know that, but I think weather kind of helps you interpret your way through a nice threatening. Let's intimidate! You motion to Gulnolf, your... Oh, I'm this guy. Never mind. You motion to Gunolf, your enormous bodyguard who looms over the man like a snake over a mouse. Gods... Eirik, laying it down on a bit heavy, don't you think? Where are the scalfings? Nobleman, up by East Wall. But that was months ago, last I know. Hod skulks away with a wave of Eric's hand, gathering things from his hovel, disappearing for a while until this blows over, you figure. Your bodyguard steps forward. Are we done here? Gunnulf, were you wearing green back at the Great Hall? Nah, just bought him while you were walking around. Why? You look like a frog. And it's better than an eggplant. Gunnulf goes off to look at more stalls. I guess I'm the big guy. Never mind. I'm trying to figure out who I am right here. I'm pretty sure I'm the big guy now. Eric, that man of yours seemed unreliable at best. A blind dog wouldn't trust Todd, but he used to be a scalfing. If they're licking their wounds, they've probably gone to old haunts, not new ones. Nobleman is a meat hall? Best I can tell. The name's ironic. Listen, I know a guy who would love to put a few of these skulls in the ground. I'm gonna go find him and then I'll meet you there. Shouldn't we have an approach of some sort? Ah, what a luxury. Come on, you've already mopped up worse today. Just make sure the governor remembers his promise. Double the usual tithe. I'll remind him. So now where does it want us to go? Okay, there's a meat house right there, and that's the only thing it's allowing me to click on. Since my clicker has been disabled, I suppose we will go to the meat house. We'll start this thing off with some drunken brawls. How about that? You arrive in front of what must be Nobleman. A few minutes later, Eric appears with a weather-beaten man introduced as Valgard. I'll point them out. Eric says over his shoulder, you ready? Let's get it over with. That's the spirit, says Valgard. Alright, here we go. Valgard boots the front door open so hard it won't close again without repair. As you enter the hall, Eric is already at the head of a table, his axe drawn. Wide-eyed, drunken scalfing scramble to find their own weapons, turning tables and mead steins in the process. Looks like we're going to get ourselves into a nice row up here in the front, which is good, because this game seems to have really enjoyable combat, so I'm hoping we occupy ourselves with it a lot. Let's have a look around the battlefield here, and it looks as though our turn order is heavily stacked in our favor. So the first guy up here appears to be, ah, we've got this gent over here on the right, and we've got spectators. What could be better than a room full of spectators? I guess normal potatoes. Fried taters? We can move around. Oh, we have to say ready. Okay, so the battle begins. There we are. So now it's distributed all the points and it's made everything look uber nice. Can we take a look at what their movement's going to be? Oh, we can. Fantastic. By clicking on any one of these individuals, we can figure out their movement. 
So I think I'm going to let them close with me first, and then we will figure out what exactly we want to do in order to get this thing done. What options do we have? We have rest, attack, stonewall, and move. I'm going to rest since none of them can get near me. And so now we're controlling our other human, which appears to be Eric. What abilities does he have? He can't make it over to there. However, this individual is probably not going to move for the next little bit. How far can he move out? Okay, so what I want to do with Eric is we'll step him forward by one. And then that'll be that. We'll allow him to kind of hang back. I want to wait for the enemy to come to me in this case. Since they do have us heavily, heavily outnumbered. We want them to come up against like a strong blockade. We want to steel arm this thing if we can. Next, what can he move to? So he will be able to get within range of this guy. However, this guy can also get within range of all of these guys. So where can those go? I don't think... Well, they can get within range, unfortunately. He's got 11 armor and 9 strength. I want to be very, very careful because I'm outnumbered like crazy right here. It looks like they've got about 8 men versus our 4. So since they've got us double teamed, we want to play a very careful, very defensive fallback on this one. I'm going to allow the turn to pass, actually. I'm not going to continue moving. I'm going to let them come to me. And since we have the option now, this is going to be our first combat. I'm going to see if I can ace this guy instantly. I don't know if you can attack on the diagonal. It doesn't look like you can, so I'm going to avoid attacking on the diagonal for now. We're going to move to right here, and he's got 10 strength. We're going to tell him to attack 5 armor. And so what are we going to do? We're going to do... It looks like we could do 8 to strength or 5 to armor. I'm going to go with 8 to strength. Oh, we aced him. Very nice. Took him out straight away, so his head is no longer with his shoulders, and he's gone to meet his ancestors at Valhalla. So now, that leaves us... I'm going to consolidate a line right here, I think. And you'll see how this plays into my next move in the following turn. So I'm going to consolidate a line. He's going to fall back by one space. We're going to play this like Final Fantasy Tactics, where we want to keep the enemy... just. A, we want to stiff arm just a tiny bit to borrow from gridiron rules here. Over on this side, now what does this individual do? He's got Rally, which gives two willpower to an ally at any range. So that pretty much is a battle shout that covers the entire battlefield and allows him to feel wonderful. It makes everybody feel all nice and tingly and get more willpower. Let's step on over to fight with this guy, I guess. It appears as though he can only do two damage. I'm going to attack his armor, I guess. And then we can add more points. What's that going to do for me? It'll make him deal three damage altogether to the armor. Let's do that so that in the next turn we can actually get something done. So his armor's now busted. I love the way they all squat to the ground when they get hit and whatnot. This is a really, really cool game. Speaking as a first impression, the presentation of this game is just simply tremendous. I mean, it's the kind of game that you look at and it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, what else can you say about it? I'm going to have him step over to here and help out with Eric, I guess was his name. So, Shield Banga, get yourself on over here. We're going to have him attack, and since his armor has been flayed a bit, we're now going to open up on him with a strength attack, and hopefully that takes him out. Down he goes. One nice little stab thrust from the sword, and he is done for. On this side, Gunolf is ready to roll one more time. Dual wielding. His arms are kind of long. He's got sort of ape-like arms. I'm not going to pick on him for it because he's like eight times my size and he's got a crazy fire red beard. But I am going to note it in my head just in case we have that like banter around the campfire. You know how warriors like a Braveheart or whatever, they always banter around the campfire? I'm feeling like that's going to happen in the future. And I'm going to make sure to make fun of him for his extra long arms. Let's slash this individual. Puny fool, your helmet cannot save you. And down he goes. Promotion. I don't know what that means, but apparently it's a good thing. Over here on this side, we have Valgard for the first time, ready to roll up against his foes. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to have him move first. The clicking system's a little odd, so if you wanted to... I'm going to explain what I'm doing here so that our first impressions video works out all right. So if I click on a character, it closes down his movement, and then I've got to click this to reopen it, or I can click away from him. Everything is handled with the left click. It's pretty much what you would expect. Wasp doesn't do anything. You do have to click and drag to get around the battlefield like so. But it's pretty standard fare for a strategy game. I'm going to have Valgard step on his axe as like comically small. It's more of a tomahawk really. I'm going to have him step down to here. And now that the numbers are shifting more favorably in our direction, they're leaning like a chopped tree. What does Stonewall do? 
Blocks three damage per hit. That might be interesting. But instead, I'm going to go for an attack. Now, we can damage his armor, or we can go straight for just a normal swing. I'm going to go for a normal swing. He doesn't have... It says he has willpower, so let's go for that. And down he goes. We use two of our willpower in order to kill that guy off. Now, on this turn, we're probably going to suffer a little bit of damage. He's now shattered our armor a bit. I'm going to go ahead and open up... That's a tough call. What I would like to do is keep a concurrent line going right here. But in so doing, what I really want to happen is because he's got that Tempest ability, I want the enemy to go here, and then here, and then here, so that he can whirlwind them all out and completely and totally take them out. When I made the whirlwind sound, I made like a little swoopy doop with my head right now. I don't have a face cam. So just so you guys know, with my head, I did like a little swirly do when I said that. In any case, I think I'm not going to take the chance. Let's just step down on and in. And we're going to attack this guy right here. We're going to go for an armor shattering and we're gonna deal three damage I guess well how much can we do there we can only do oh we can do four yeah let's just do four we'll exert ourselves a tiny bit and we've sent him down to the floor the first stabbing is off and away I see the AI spending more time trying to shatter my armor which makes me a little bit nervous honestly what is this right here ability rank okay Oh, I guess I don't have that ability anymore well let's go ahead and I'm gonna get in behind this guy and I want to test it out and see if flanking does anything so let's attack him. It appears as though we're doing 5 damage. I'm not going to exert myself because that should be more than enough to send him down. Yep. Goodbye, Goldiebeard. That was his nickname. I don't know if you guys knew that, but his name was Goldiebeard. That's what I had named him in between here and there. You don't want to mess with a guy named Goldiebeard normally, but when you're like a 30 foot tall giant with a huge sword, you might as well mess with Goldiebeard. Who cares? Oh, he has Tempest. Damn it. I've got my abilities all mixed up. Weak, weak sauce. Another attack is off and away, dealing one damage to our shield banga. I'm going to use... Yeah, let's use one of our Starzies to get on over here. And now that we've closed the gap, we are going to attack him aggressively. I'm going to shatter his... No, this big guy one-shots everybody, so I'm not going to take the time to shatter his armor. Let's go ahead and go in like so. We're just going to deal some damage to him. He's down to 2 HP, which means he's pretty much combat ineffective. They said that as your strength goes down, it's going to function a little bit like a lot of tabletop RPGs, where as you get wounded further and further and further, you don't really deal as much damage. So I'm not going to concern myself there. That does mean that as we play through the game, we want to take care and make sure that we distribute damage appropriately. I'm going to move over to here and see if I can't kill him off. Down he goes. He just got two-handed. God. Okay, that was pretty badass. He just pulled out some kind of crazy Jedi move right there where he darts past us and then stabs us in the gut. I'm impressed. I'm impressed, but I'm not shaken. There's a difference. Respect few, fear none here. Let's get him started with a bit of damage. Even for his armor being so far down, it's weird. Let's go ahead and shatter the remainder. It must be because he's wounded. We'll pull him back away from combat in just a minute since they're doing a pretty good job of focus firing him. I'll step this giant. I don't know if that's going to block my movement. Let's sweep this way to make sure that he has an exit route that he can get away through. Ow! Okay, so we need to handle this, like, right now. I'm going to move him over to here. And unfortunately, I don't know if there's going to be attacks of opportunity. I wish there were. Ah, because his armor is gone, he is now a dead man. So he just went into pillage mode. I'm going to see if I can get in behind him, and then we're going to give him the old bladed reach around. And let's go for the kill right now. I don't know if this stuff's going to carry over into the next battle, but I would prefer to end it right here and right now, considering the HP of our shield banger. The foes lying dead at your feet would regret either causing, ever, oh, it was ever crossing your path. It says the same thing. We have two promotions. Very, very cool. And ten renowned bonus for everybody involved. There they are, gods be damned. I've got to go wash off this blood. Eric is looking out the hall's windows onto the bay. A fleet of longships approach with sails of bold reds and blues. One banner I know well, Vognir. Next for Viking kingship, last we spoke. The other flag? Looks important. Yeah, important guests. See what I deal with all day long? Makes, it makes things make a little more sense. You hoped I'd have a stake in saying everything's fine here when the royal guests arrived. Not me, the governor. Now I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrails still in the Great Hall before they come by. Can I ask for one more favor? What is it? 
If you happen to stall our guests down in the docks, I, uh, I wouldn't object to it. Well, maybe I will. Eric and Valgard hustle from the mead house. To his credit, Eric tosses the barkeep a spar of silver for the mess. You give an apologetic shrug and go to, the, or, and go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. All right, I think I'm going to break the episode off here simply because we're running a little bit low on time and it looks like the way the game is going to be paced, it may be a good idea that I stop each episode before we jump into the next new fray. It's been about 20 minutes or so. I feel like we've looked at the game through a reasonable rosy colored glasses and we'll look further into it. I don't know if this is going to be a long term LP. I've recorded a few episodes. I'm looking forward to playing it with you guys and it is going to be replacing Battle Worlds Chronos, but we'll keep an eye on the time and all that fun stuff for the future. Once again, this is Stoic Studios The Banner Saga, which released this morning to Steam. I hope you guys are enjoying it thus far and I look forward to playing it with you again tomorrow. Take care out there, everybody, and I will see you next time.